very warm welcome to the Predator and WPA World Tumble Women's Championship here in Klagenfurt, Austria. Our second match for today is a pretty good matchup, I think, between Veronique Menar from Canada and local hero Jasmine Ushan. In the commentary booth, we have George Teacea and myself, Tim De Reuter. So what do you think here, George? Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, I think we've got the hometown favorite, uh, Jasmine Ocean versus Vero from Canada. Vero Menard. And the uh, young lady, we actually, we sat, we sat uh, with Vero and uh, Brittany Bryant on the bus a couple of times now. And they're really enjoying Klagenfurt. It's a beautiful place. It's a great matchup. Uh, I believe Jasmine would be favored two different ways. She's a hometown favorite, and using Fargo, she is a 7.45 versus a 6.28. So she's a little bit of a favorite there, too. This is a race to seven. Uh, they're one match away from the final 16, so they have to win this match. The winner here will have to win one more match to get to the final 16 in the women's. Very, very important match. Playing 10 ball, three foul rule. Race this to is seven. Alternate break. So Veronique won the leg. Let's see if she's breaking from the side rail or in the center. Looks like she's going from the center. Off the rail though, you don't get to see this so often anymore, breaking from the short rail, hand on the short rail. Broke from the middle. Offensive break, decent spread. You have the 8-9 lined up. And a nice opening shot on the one for Jasmine Ocean. Yeah, you would think that the eight got tied up, but there's a combo and the two ball does go. So a pretty, actually a pretty nice layout to start with, like to get in the match. It's a very nice layout to get going here. Just a stop shot off the one and then it just really opens up. The 8-9 is lined up perfect. Yeah, just if you can get straight on the 4, it would be making your life easier to get from the 5 to the 6. I think that's the only piece where you really need to put some extra work in. Well, if there's any work involved, the 4 ball is not going to be there. So it's just coming across the 10 for the 6. It's almost a stop shot for the 7. Um, it's lined up very, this is like one of the greatest opening racks uh, in a match. You can let your stroke out a little bit, you can do what you need to do. Now Jasmine is in perfect, perfect line here. Yeah, just if you play stun on this five ball, you might get close to the scratch. So I think I would be playing this with top left. Not too much top spin, just, just a little higher in the cue ball. And then by playing the left spin, you can really feel how close you get to the side pocket or not. Nicely done. Good angle on the six. Can now choose to stun off the rail for the seven in the top right corner or float it in and shoot the seven in the side. This is preference. Some like to keep stunning and comfortable stroke, and some like to play pocket speed and float balls in. Uh, with a little stun shot, you're able to uh, stroke the ball a little firmer and maintain a, a nicer rhythm to your stroke, nice, better timing. Yeah, for Lo example, I would probably float it in. It's because it's my comfort zone. It's, yeah. Is it really like yeah. the float balls in? I, I make oh, more mistakes speed. floating balls in. I like to give them a nice little yeah, it's firm stroke, medium stroke. That's where a pocket speed comes in. Like if you play it soft and you hit it a little bit too thick, it still slides in. Like you have a little margin of error. So yeah, I guarantee to have this. Even if she hits it thicker, the ball is gonna throw it in. It's gonna yeah. It's just, so it's just as long as she hits the right side of it. I would not try to cut it too much. No. Try to hit a little four. Yeah, just like that. And I just come across for the 10 in the same pocket and 
she gets the first rack under her belt. It's really dangerous though if yeah, Fernie gave her a really good first chance in the match to actually really get in stroke as yes. well. Well, she maintained perfect position throughout the rack. That was very important for an opening rack. She struggled here on the first uh, match here. And losing, both players lost their opening match. Uh, Jasmine lost to uh, Silviana Lu, and uh, uh, Vero lost to Ina Kaplan. But Vera came back and defeated Emily Duddy, and of course Jasmine defeated Anna Gradis Gradisnik. Sneak. She must have one of the juniors, pl junior players, because I was reading off some juniors in the earlier match. Uh, since we have juniors here, we have the World Championships, we have the men's eight ball World Championships. Uh, so we've got a week long of great pool here in Klagenfurt at the sports arena. Referee using the Predator arrow rack here. Predator Arcos two balls. Ready for uh, Jasmine to break them. Has a big break, so I expect some power in the cue ball. Breaking from the side rail though. ball right to the side pocket breaking from the side I gotta say she actually hit it perfect it's just that the cue ball got that kiss yeah she would have been closer to the two but and she she hit it great and the kiss put her in a perfect location for the two ball yeah just the only thing I could think of is you have to play the two ball pretty soft to hold the three for the side she could go travel around to the center of the table, but then you will have to play good speed. If you come up too short, you don't have a shot. If you run too far, you might get a little strange on the three. So I well, think I would float this in with just some inside. One, two, three, See, I like three, dragging three, the ball five. here. Oh, yeah, the possible, just, yeah. And just make sure you avoid the four ball. Because if you hit that second wave, you come right for the three in line shape for the side pocket. They both work. Preference, as you as you said earlier, yeah. Oh, and that was the thing too. So she decided to go up for the three, and just by needing to get more speed on the cue yeah. ball, she misjudged the the aiming. She's got lucky though, and a pretty tough kick shot for Veronique Menar here, just because of how much open space there is in the center of the table. It's so easy to leak out. So she's called a two in the corner. We'll need some, if she plays soft speed. This is a nice speed, it might end, oh, never mind. Yeah, she just she just cut it a bit too a much. If too she much. catches it a little thicker, I think. It's by the four. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to uh, say. It's gonna come up pretty nice well, by the that's four That's the ball. thing also, most of the time I look at the safety first and then I just call a pocket in case I hit it bad. But most of the players, they do it the other way around. They choose a pocket and then they're trying to go there and hopefully if they don't make it, they get safe. Again, another opening for Jasmine. Yeah, and... Well, with openings like this, you get in stroke real fast. Yeah, 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 you get so much feel for the ball. Yeah. See, this is what she had off of the two ball to begin with, and she tried to go to the upper part of the table for the three ball in the corner and overcut it a little bit, but came up nice. Probably just high right, catch the ball a little thicker. The more right spin you play, the thicker you can hit this four. It's going to turn the ball in a little bit more, get to the center of the table. Good speed. Yeah, I think she's got straight on the six though, so might have to just stop the cue ball and play a longer seven or draw to try and get close to the seven, but then to cross over automatically. Get on the inside of the seven to come out for, yeah. the, seven, for the eight. Oh, I 
think she got straight or really straight though. Probably the only spot where you don't want to be. So if she's straight, she might be able to draw straight back to the short side of the eight. She's cheated the pocket. She's never gonna get really straight on the eight though, but it's manageable. Difficult shot, she can choose to play low right and come across to the bottom side of the table and come back out. She could choose to play with top right again and try not to scratch and come straight down, but that's really speed sensitive. Jasmine has her own Billiard Sport Academy here in Klagenfurt and is one of the sponsors for this event. Along with Kamui Brands and Predator Group and Reichtwert. Well, so you pronounce the German the names. I'm trying. <laughs> it's done on the nine here. Center of the table is all right. Richtwert. There you go. Yeah. That, was for you. that was for, oh my. I can pronounce that one. Missed. Oh, very unexpected. Yes, it was. Just wondering, Surprising. did she play with some right spin that maybe turned in a little bit too much? Very unexpected, but you know, actually, I think the nine got pretty tough. It's a makeable shot, though, so you, Veronique should be happy to have something. I much rather be at the table than in the chair, because now it's up to me not my opponent. The good thing though, if you play just top spin, cut the ball just top spin, there's no scratch because the top spin is gonna bend the cue ball a little bit more forward. She's playing low in the cue ball, which oh, she called a bank and tried to be safe also. Oh, she's a good shot there. She played good speed. Of course, you're always gonna leave a cut if you play it that way, but it's not a guaranteed making the cut here as well. No, this is a tough cut. And you will have to go to the short side of the 10, I think. Go two rails to the top side. You know, these are the kind of cuts that, that, that I think people should practice because they can really help your eyes focus on the shot and on the ball. She hit that. I missed it on the on the oh, pro side. And that side pocket point really Helped. saved her there. Yeah. She would have sold out if she didn't catch the point, so real lucky roll. And that's that's why they call missing on the pro side, because if you miss on the pro side, the ball comes back to the bottom rail and doesn't hang in the pocket. We have eight matches going on uh, with the women's tournament. Uh, all on the loser round. Uh oh, cue ball, goodbye. She hit it too thin. What a gift. Oh. So tough. If you try to hit it this thin, you probably won't. Wow. A little back and forth rack here after missing the two and missing the nine. But it's still Jasmine Ushan. Was taking early lead, 2-0. Some of the matches around the arena. Brittany Bryant from Canada versus Melanie Susanguth. There's still no score there. Some of these matches have not gotten started due to some juniors playing their matches in the previous round. And they're still, still playing. So we'll wait for them to finish, and these ladies will start their matches. But some of the players, your reigning champion, 10-ball champion, Che Yu Chao, will be playing Veronika Ivanovskaya. And then Juan Kakai from Vietnam. No, from Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Yeah, Hong Kong. Uh, yep, Hong Kong, excuse me. Uh, is playing Ailu Kibaroglu, and the score is 1-0. Sarah Rocha from Portugal is playing Maiti Ropero from Spain, leads 1-0. And Chen Chia 
two. Uh, Amber Chen is waiting for her match. Seo Seo oh, is tied with Monica Zabek. And Chihiro Kawahara leads Pan Jung Ting. Pan Jiao Ting. Pan Jiao Ting. Yeah. One zero. Yeah, good to see that we're also having some Chinese players back on the tour again. Oh wow, we have Simi Chen here, folks. If you haven't seen her on the stream, has she been on the stream yet? Mm, not yet. Simi but Chen and Han Yu. P Pan Zhao Ting. Pan Zhao Ting is another one. She's the girl that beat Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh yeah. Example, yeah. There was some challenge, but oh. Yeah, and actually, all three of those girls are not ladies. Are not listed on the top 100 female players in the world because of their absence in the last year, yeah. year and a half, two years from Fargo. And now that they're going back on tour, they're going to come on pretty quick. And uh, guess what? They're going to be in the top 100 because the highest rated player is uh, Che Yu Chao at 770? 70, 79, I believe. It's pretty high. But, uh, uh, and both of these, I think uh, Han Yu is 788. Uh, Simi Chen is 797, so they're way up there. Yeah, so Vernick scratched on the break, finally making a ball, but left the ball in hand for Jasmine, and again, pretty open layout here. Yeah. Jasmine's gonna get a stroke here on this uh, stream table, getting the open racks that she's getting like this, and. Um, just the only thing from here is if she would be getting straight on the eight, things could be getting a little bit annoying. As long as she gets in between the seven and the eight now, if she's straight on the seven, she's good. Just top spin, maybe a hair of right. You don't have to play max spin, just just a bit, maybe one tip. Now, if she leaves a cue ball around the third diamond on the bottom long rail, she has automatic angle to stun the cue ball out. She probably just try to leave it against the long rail there. Just kind of come into it and stop it there. It'd be perfect. Wouldn't do much with it at all. Just perfect right there. I would follow this for the nine. What would you do there, Tim? I think I'm still stunning. You're still stunning? Yeah. I mean, she got a little bit less angle than I would have liked, but I think she's still okay. She can even choose to play draw and shoot the nine in the side because the angle is going to make her come off the rail anyways. Just with top spin, I would be too scared of staying close to the rail or not accelerating enough, and now it's a really long shot. If you stun off, you're always going to be nearby the nine, or okay. if you draw, you're nearby your work. And see, that's uh, the way I look at this is with top spin. I can give it a better stroke. And she chose to draw back for the side pocket and going to be up against the 10. Yeah. Hello, a little firm here. Yeah. She's hit it good, just table three. a little bit firm. It's all right. I mean, she's smiling she like, look what I did here. I mean, you know, if she makes a nine, she's going to be fine. But it wouldn't be the first time I've seen someone miss this shot. Yeah. This is missable being elevated as she is. And she has to be careful. It's all ball fouls. Nice recovery shot, though, from Jess Mushan. As it should be. She is a instructor. She is a world-class player. You can expect that we're going to see a lot of that from her. And the score is now 3-0. Yeah, I mean, not so many chances for Veronique. She, made, she went for the for the bank on the nine when Jasmine missed the nine and besides that twice on the break she didn't really get something after well you know the one thing with, that I'm that I've seen with these first three games is Jasmine's had the best of it uh, she's been gifted she was gifted a 10 ball uh, and then when she came to the table off of Vero's break it was a wide open rack that just led to each other kind of what I actually want to use to get in stroke and uh, second rack this last one she got herself a little bit of trouble there being elevated over the nine 
but recovered nicely and uh, finished it off. So it's been a good mix, but she's enjoyed a, she enjoys a three-game lead. Another big break, just not there head on the, the five. one, but she's made a five. And oh, look, look again, at this she's layout. Got straight on the one, now, the two and the three next to it. Just look at the last three games and look at this break. Now, this is a good break. You know, you, you're not going to sit there and say things are going her way. She made a good break. The cue ball's in a good place. It went to the rail and back, but still in a good place. And the one ball just sat up tight and said, hello. Oh, she won't be complaining about this layout either. No. One, two, three. You know, usually when you take the one, two, three away, then the wreck is wide open, no problems. You've got plenty of room to maneuver. Just wondering, does the eight go in the, in the bottom left corner? That's the only thing I'm wondering. Um, if it doesn't go, it could be a little bit annoying. I would say she's got at least half a pocket. No, maybe not, Tim. I think you've got to make a good point there. I mean, it's the only thing that I really see being annoying in this rack so far. And we are playing WPA rules, which means that if she plays the 8-10 combo, the 10 will spot back up. It will not count as a win. Well, she might also be able to play to the short side of the 8 also. Sure. So she's going to play one rail. Good feel of the table here, though. She's using a lot of outside spin to make some angle on that. She didn't want to stun the ball. So now, even if you stop the cue ball there, you need to get to the short rail for the seven. But just a little stop shot to the side. Just make sure you have angle on the six. Don't always have to be close to the six. Or to, yeah, in this case, you don't have to be close to your next shot as long as you have a decent angle to come back out. She's downing it a little bit. She's scared if she plays topspin soft, she might bump the seven. Well, in that case, you can just stun out. There's a little mark in between the seven and the nine. I think that's where I would want to be. Yeah. I think, it, I think if she gets close to the eight ball, she'll have, she can get it by the 10. But either way, she's going to want to be close to her for either shot, either corner. She's got a good angle to come down for it. Ooh, that's a little tight. That's a little. She would maybe would have liked to be a little straighter or a little more, but now mm. she won't be able to play three rails, but I think she can still get there two rails. The only thing with the two rails is she might get close to a scratch. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, a good a good, a good spin shot here. Oh. Okay, so based on how she has played this, this means the eight goes. Because she didn't even it's try to get to the short this side. This is a missable so. shot. Yeah, it's not full corner, though. This is a missable shot. The good thing, though, she can play for the nine in the side, so not much spin. Just focus on making it. You're almost guaranteed to be on the nine to the side. And that's exactly why it was missable. She had to come get pretty close to that ball. Now, how much has she left, Veronique? Yeah, caught it a little bit too thick. Not not enough to make it. Or it's tight. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's it looks like Oh, I don't like this. Especially with the new Arcadia cloth. Well, just with the new cloth and then with how much slide the cloth still has because oh. it doesn't really change after a couple of days. I think if you play this so much spin then what are you going to do here so even scary. though you don't like it? Maybe just kick at it and try to hit the right side and get the 10 in between. That's a big scratch. I'm going to hit the ball, go to the rail, and kind of push the ball past the 10, and maybe the cue ball She's will stay there. She's playing right spin here. I don't she made it. She oh, could make the she, ball. Wow. Nice shot, Vero. It was so tough to get that cue ball at least out of that corner. Now it's another tough shot though. Is she playing this with right spin? I would play with a little left a little spin bit, though to just go around hair. the corner. 
The inside is so tough. She's playing a half a tip English. Okay, nice shot. Then again, she didn't have to go all the way back down for the to get straight on the 10. She, she always had the cut. Oh, you don't want to loaf on this shot. That corner up on the right is ominous. I think I would play this with a little left spin just to go straight over to the right long rail to eliminate all the scratches. That corner right there I was talking about, scary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to play it this way. I'm yeah. Well, she got it there though, so 3-1. Three, 3-1, one. Three one, and we'll go for a break. We'll be right back. what the format is, the better player will still win. This tempo to win the title. He is your champion. You world champion. champions And what a clip you guys just enjoyed of all our previous champions that have been on the Pro Billiard Series. Vero, Menard to break the ball's ear. Nice square hit. Unproductive break. She can, Jasmine will be able to see the edge of the one to run the cue ball for a safety. Well, if I would be Vero, I think I would be starting to change around a little bit. She's only made a ball one out of three breaks, and yeah, I mean it's been also well, it's been also wide open every time for yeah. Jasmine to to get going. Of and course, now it's not, but still the balls are open. She's getting a good spread, and you know, not losing the cue ball, but she's not making a ball, which pays dividends for your opponent. Just wondering if she catches that one ball thin. Because of the slide, you might run into the six. If you can beat running into the six, you might be able to run three rails behind the ten and get the one ball behind the eight nine. Look at that. Just I like think that. I just noticed she Jasmine is uh, left eye dominant. She had her left eye over the cue. It, it looked like from that angle. I'll take a look again. Never noticed that before. Oh, she's almost square. Never mind. Again, leaving an edge. Ah, it's all right, though. It's not. We're in a spot where Jasmine can play easy safety. Well, the six ball will cover everything up. All she has is cut it real thin, come past the six, and she's pretty much covered up. Will be easier to hit though after. Yes. So like, the, the real first is going to be most likely there. And the eight nine still close from now, so 
Oh, I yeah, think she hit it pretty it. thick. Yeah, she hit it pretty thick. Good chance here for Veronique. If she hits the left side of the one, I would run into the eight. Bump the nine open as well. You're sticking to the eight if you catch it full. I like that, Tim. She's playing a lot. She's, gonna, she's playing the ball. Oh, she tried to drag it right on top. She's she's actually hit a pretty good safety, she, except the rails there. She's got the hook. Just for future reference, it would have been nice to open the 8-9 already. I mean, there's a good safety shot here if Jasmine can kick the top side of the one here. And try to get the cue ball one rail behind the four, just soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's called a corner just in case. Pretty sure she's kicking pretty soft at this. Oh, she's caught the wrong side of the one. Uh. And Vero is a uh, two time runner up here in the Canadian Championship in eight ball and ten ball. She had a ninth place finish in Wisconsin just recently. And she won a Josh tour. That's a tour up in New York, isn't it? I think so. This is a good shot though. She's gonna open up the eight nine, bring the cue ball behind the four. She's played this ball. Also, I don't think there is a kick using the right long rail, so she has to go over the left side, but then the tree is also intervening, right. so. You don't like the two railer off the top rail? Or the short rail it's first? It's sensitive though on the sliding cloth. It's really sensitive. Touch to judge how it's going to open up on the second rail. She it's might have to though. This table seen some play now for three days, so I think it'll be. And one thing about the predator cloth I noticed is, is uh, it seems to tighten up. Even when it's brand new, it's not as slippery as, as other cloths when they're brand new. I think it stays the same as well. So she, they both have played some matches, so they could. Guess how much he's going to open up? So she's going two rails. Yeah, I think that's the only only shot. Pretty long there. But it was a good safety from Veronique. Also, Jasmine's now in two fouls, so she could still up uh, to say, listen, let's try another one and then after hopefully run out. Let's see if Vero recognizes the the two fouls. I think if she plays the one over the short rail behind the five and get the cue ball tied in between the rail if and she, the nine. If she can snug it up, if she can tuck it in behind the nine and the rail, uh, she's going to like life. I think this is an excellent opportunity. I think I would pass up the shot to tuck that cue ball in, as she has. The Just as she has. The only nice thing, shot. though, she... She, she did get the save. She has left the one rail, though. Uh, I'm not sure she did. She's tucked in after the night. Can you see? Does it go by that? Yeah, and I think it's also just enough to pull up on the one. Yeah, well, Jasmine's on two. Yeah, she's got and it. She's got it. She did leave the easy, easy kick shot, as you mentioned, Tim. God, you've been right like twice already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just such a difference. Tim and I like to play around like that, folks. It's, it's yeah. such a big difference if you can get in between the rail and the ball, or you leave that just that small, yeah, small room in between. She's gonna play safe behind the nine as well. Again? Yeah. She didn't really have much attacking options here. Now I'm wondering if. I don't think she can kick just past the side. And kicking in front of the side with left spin, I'm not sure how much she's gonna grab, so. She's called the eight ball, so. She's wondering. It's okay, a just, she, she it's a just in case call. Yeah, she can still get past the side. I wasn't sure if she could do this, so. Oh, she didn't call ball. the cue ball on the side, though. I mean, now it's time for Veronique to try to run out at least. Also, the one, two, three are open. If she gets nice on the four, 
then maybe getting to the eight is somewhat more tricky, but layout is favoring her. Well, it looks like we have all our matches going now, all eight of them. And Chihiro, Kawahara, over Pang. It's 3 0. Seo Seo over Monica Zebek. They're tied at two. A little elevated over the eight, but. Natural angle to get to the four. Nice stroke. Hit that good. So now it's basically building up to get nice on the eight. Because the eight doesn't go in the top left corner from this field because of the ten. Now, I do like to be on the bottom side, probably where the cue ball is now. If she gets to the top side on the short rail, it's really tough to get on the eight. So, plays with right spin, just soft. Ooh, caught it a little thin. Wanted to hit it a little thicker. Now she's got pretty straight here, George. You know, I was just looking at some of the matches coming up. And at 3.30, you're going to have some great matches on table one and on table two. Kelly Fisher versus Christina Tkach and Simi Chen versus Pia Filler. And then at 2 p.m. we have another match. I think it's going to be a junior match. So we have a week full of pool. Men's World Eight Ball Championships. The WPA World Juniors Championships and the uh, WPA World's 10 Ball Women's Championship. All here in Klagenfurt at the Sports Arena, Sports Park Arena. So she did get okay on the eight, just everywhere up table was gonna give her an angle the other side, like to the other side. So it's not easy to get to the nine. She's got her work cut out here, though. She's got to she come with a good shot and get the cue ball over to the right side. Yeah, I had to play yeah. a switch full draw. And I, I kind of like going underneath the 10 there with the cue ball. Go and around it? At, going around it. It was kind of tight, but it, was, it laid nice for that. It just laid pretty good for that. This is tough to get back on his 10 ball. Yeah, she actually got fortunate making the 8 yes. in a not a sign pocket. Now this, she will have to go for this. And you don't have to, now again, you don't have to play maximum right spin, maximum draw and get all the way down. Just get past the side. Hit it the rail and you'll be fine. Oh. Well, she got perfect shape on the 10. And believe it or not, she got quite fortunate again. This is why, you know, this, this match has been going her way. But she's been playing. She's made some good runs. And then she's had a couple of, you know, uncharacteristic errors. That was a tough shot to get back the way she did. I think she's going for the bank. Yeah, oh, it's in. It's in, what a shot from Veronik uh, Minar. And the cue ball came around just like you described, just uh, in a decent position for the 10 ball. Yeah, you don't have to get the, the cue best, ball all the way not down. The worst. Wow, what a shot. <laughs> nice shot by Vero. Vero Menard, Veronique Menard from Canada. Gave us a nice bank shot on that nine ball. It's going on the highlight reels. You'll see it later on, folks. 
Tim just wrote it down. And a little more confident after a shot. You know, a shot like that will pump you up. That's for sure. And I'm wondering what it's going to do to Jasmine because she's made a couple mistakes getting to the end of the wreck. Like she's missed an eight. Now she's missed the nine, which could have she could have been 5-0 up. Now it's just 3-2. Three, Jasmine will come and break this wreck at three games to two. Vero won the lag. Leading by a game. She was leading by three. She's dropped two games in a row. Although she didn't drop that last game, Vero stole it with a great bank shot on the nine. So at two, we're gonna have the boys under 17 and the draw girl over the draw for the uh, for the girls. It's gonna be interesting. I think it's the second round for both of them, boys under 17 and the girls. So we'll get to see some younger talents in the game. If you folks missed it, there was a great match on this morning at 10 o'clock with uh, young Felix Vogel, a 15-year-old. Matched up against Maj Badovinic from Slovenia. Felix was from Germany. Young man from Germany is 15 years old and he has a 7.30 Fargo. Convincing win, he won six games to one. And, and you wonder, you know, you ask these young kids, especially these juniors, who's your favorite player? And Felix says, right off the base was Feder and Copini. What better role models can somebody pick in pool? I don't think there's two out there. Nice shot there. She went for the bank, and then in case she wouldn't make the bank, she would have a second chance. And Jasmine's gonna hit the one though. Is she gonna get cover for the one ball? Yes, right behind the three. Look how nice she tucked that one. Oh no, it didn't tuck in. I thought it was up against the three there. Oops. She's left it tough though. Pretty straight, cue ball on the rail. If you're gonna play this with a lot of top spin, it's gonna curve as well. So I think you'll have to leave yourself long on the two. I don't think she'll curve it. I think she'll throw a slider. To leave oh, that's on. baseball, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, she used the curve. Yeah. And she, see? Some some players know how to throw a curveball. Oh, she's in more trouble here. Queuing over the eight. Can only go forward on this two, and that nine ball is not in a favorable position yeah but I don't know what to play here to be honest I would just stun it off the rail and come off take the long shot on the three Or play safe like that. Yeah, I think it's better. <laughs> I I was just not sure if she could yeah, if really she stun if she the cue made it, still. Yeah, she was up on top of it, but yeah. just try to get it off the rail so she'd have a long, long shot under three and just settle for that. It was tough. She was elevated and very close to that uh, that ball. She was elevated to. And she's trying to yeah. leave. She left distance, but she was trying to get behind that wall of balls there. Well, and she was also trying to bank the two ball into the short rail and run into the nine. Yeah, and she so went around the nine.
This is gonna end up safe. Nice. And she has pushed the three and the seven together, so. Yeah, she's got a nice kick shot so where she can send the two ball past the three seven for a safety, for a return safety. Wondering if she's gonna go one rail or two rails here. She's looking at one rail. She could go two rails and nick the two behind the three seven. Softer. She's playing one rail, trying to catch the ball probably half thick. That will work. Nice shot. Didn't catch it as thick as she wanted to, but she's played a good speed and definitely found full cover. Well, Chihiro Kawahara goes on. She's four games to zero over Pan. Thing. And she's a Shihiro's a seven forty one Fargo. So she now is did she bump the three ball open enough, Jasmine, earlier to now be able to play it? I think it goes. Yeah, I think so. So just try to I was gonna say try to get close to the three. Uh, she's got being from far it can be awkward though. Like now this shot is a little tougher farther away. Yeah. The ref will be eyeing this one. Uh, seven ball first, I think. Yeah. Jasmine well, especially Newman. if you play the shot with some spin, then it's super easy to catch that seven ball first. And there was some outside spin on there, breaking in into the Which seven. Which immediately pushes the ball towards the seven. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Continue. You didn't interrupt me. Oh, I felt like I did. Nice shot. Just doesn't want to get straight. No, nope. she's got a perfect angle perfect. on the five. Nicely done. Only thing to worry about here is when you bring this back. You worry about the side pocket a little bit. You want to go. You don't want to go that close though. So. Oh, she put some juice on that, a little hot. Might as well go for the bank and play shape on the eight. Yeah, I like the bank here. Low left, draw the cue ball out, two rails. See, I don't even bother with low. I just go with center left and come around. And here's a firm. I like that speed. Well. Again, she makes an eight ball out of turn and uh, doesn't get put back in the box. Well, one other thing though, she did leave the cue ball on the rail and making and the seven, you might just <laughs> run towards the nine. So it's not, and you can't really play jacked up. Like it's not gonna take so much draw. Oh, she's gonna jack up for it. She's gonna elevate for it, excuse me. She's gonna play double speed, maybe travel more. Yeah, that's usually the case when you elevate. Well, especially she's trying to make an angle yeah. to stay away from the nine. So she, yeah, well, unconsciously you're trying to stay away from the nine and then gets a little thick. Well, as we all know, elevating changes the, the, the way you hit the ball. And now it's just going from this nine ball to the ten ball, and it lays rather nice for it. Come into the rail with some left spin. Come just past the middle of the table, and you'll be straight on the on the ten. Yeah, oh, again, a little hot, inch, but a little hot. She still has the cut on the ten ball, though. But 
It's a pretty difficult cut, and she also knows it's too this tight to each, or if she doesn't make it, she uh, can start the battle again yeah. to come back. On, on a position shot like that, this is hard, as hard as she could leave it. A couple inches up, a couple inches down, she has a better and easier shot. Very makeable shot, though. Also very missable. See how I covered myself there, Tim? Yeah, good <laughs> job. But look where she's left the cue ball. Eight feet away. Well, at least close to the rail. Jasmine will have to work for it. This is not a gift. She actually missed the two ball like this earlier in the match. Oh. Jasmine's struggling a little bit, it seems like. Once again, long ten ball, level the score. Well, there it is. And Vera drains it, and she does level the score, Tim. Three to three. Jasmine gets the first three games and gives up the next three games. And actually, you know, the last two games by Vero were a combination of Jasmine giving her the opportunity, but Vero taking the opportunity with a strong shot. A strong shot on the bank nine, and that was a good shot too to cut that back. Tied at three. Back to Chirihiro. Kawahara now leads five to one. Amber Chan trails three to one. Our reigning champion, Che Yu Chao, leads three to one in, the, in this loser, this second round loser uh, round here in Klagenfurt. And Jasmine Ocean, the hometown favorite, tied at three. Well, cue ball's still spinning and just stopped <laughs> as the player as Vera approached it. Now, will she try to make this ball or hit the right side of it and come two rails? to where the cue ball is right now. Looks like she's, she's gonna bank the one ball behind cover and found it. Nice shot. Very nice shot. Good control. I mean, it wasn't tough to get the one ball down, but the speed usually is really tough on these kind of shots. If you under hit it, you sell out. If you hit it too firm, you're gonna leak it on the other side, so nice shot. Regardless of the speed, her cue ball is real nice. Nice hit. But no cover by the seven. Still a tough rack to do anything with. That left hand English should should pay some dividends here. That three ball might cause her some trouble. Yeah, I don't think there was any way to get on the two from so there. So she, she she actually that was that's actually a very smart move she just did there. It was just accepted the two ball. It's got a decent cut. Well, uh, problem is she can't hold it for the three. Yeah, so she, I think she's gonna go two rails. Gotta go in between the nine and the seven to the short rail and come yeah. back out. It's risky, but I don't see any other way. Oh, it's I agree. Either that or play with right spin and go three rails, but then again, the, sh the no. making the two is gonna be so much more difficult. Oh, she played it really soft. Oh, look how nice it? she's gonna. 
Oh, no, don't get behind the nine. Oh, don't, no, it doesn't look good. Actually, the way how she's played it is even more difficult. She's hit it really well. Yeah. Would be very unfortunate to get behind the nine the way she's played it. It's got a little tricky. This is a hard hit. Can she go by the nine? Is there a window to get to the side of the three? Looks like I think there she is. She might be able to thin it yeah. and then hopefully get the cue in between the nine and the rail. I think so. Try to double up. Yeah. Oh, this is looking good. Nice shot. Yeah, she couldn't have put it better with her hand. Well, she could have taken away the side rail. Not them. Yeah, that's the only thing you could say that she has left. Well, pretty easy one railer here. Yeah, a little kick shot. But then still, the, the main thing most of the time is just to get the hook. Get the return hook. It's going to be hard to do. Depends on the speed. She doesn't want to hit this too hard. She might be able to hit the left side of it as we see the three ball and maybe fall be, uh, fall on the four like this. Oh, like this. nice shot. Nice shot, Ferenik Minar. Beautiful kick shot. Nice kick and save. You can also see she was really trying to play this because yes. of the speed yeah. she's played it. If she was trying anything else, the yeah, speed, speed would not be correct. Speed was very important right there. And a as was hitting the three ball where she did on the left side there because it just it worked out great. A little trap here, though. No easy one rails. But now she's going well, over the... If she hits the... if she hits, She's got a kick at it. Can but she, if she still go one rail of the short rail, but... I don't know about the short rail. I like this long rail, but if she hits the the left side of it, she's going to go in the pocket. It's going to scratch. And she's hit the seven ball and scratched. Is, the, is that a double scratch? It's two fouls now. Okay. No, no. <laughs> so she has pushed the seven to where it's blocking the four ball to the bottom right corner now. So it's either you play the combo on the seven, but then you might tie up the four. So I think I'm going to go. Yeah, what, what do you play? I was going to say maybe get to the other side for the four in the bottom left, but most likely to get more angle. Is she able to hold the cube, uh, hold the cue ball and the four along she the short rail? That four should come up. Should come up just enough off the five to get past it, maybe. Depends on the speed she hits it. Actually, it won't. It won't come up. It's a little tricky, though. Yeah, it is. It's going to hit the rail and maybe come out a ball. and. Yeah, but it won't go past the five, I don't think. If she hits it good, it won't. I like how that she's did. played it this way with topspin. Yeah. Not trying to hold it for that corner, yeah. but going up exactly. That was that was very well thought out. And a pretty good angle here. She can play soft draw. Just make sure you're not straight on the five. Just get any angle on the five is okay. Just draw to the short rail. Nicely done. She's also starting to stroke the ball a little better than in the beginning. Because well, she gets a little bit more play in too. She's gotten more play, exactly. Exactly. Well, she lost the first three games on pretty much. It could have gone the other way, all three games. Oh, she's hit it a little firm. I was thinking straight or any angle going to the top sh long rail would be okay. Now she's running towards the 10. Uh, what would you do here, Tim? I, I, I personally I probably... I'd max draw. Max go draw? Go to the long rail and come back out. Center of the table is okay. 
Okay. Like that. Yeah, you just, I mean, you know you're not going to be close and straight on the nine. But from where, how she ended up on the eight, I would take any shot on the nine. I didn't think she had that kind of an angle to do that. I was thinking I would stop the ball and just take the bank because of the way it laid. Barrow's looking good. This is to go up a game. Makes this 10 ball, she wins four games in a row after losing three. And she does. 4-3, Veronique Menard, first time leading this match. Yeah, she started out 3-0. So, and looks like now Jasmine's gonna go for a little break, a so I guess we're gonna take one too. So we'll be right back. Well, folks, there's a good look at the arena there that we have here at the sports park. Mo, our cameraman, is waiting for the players to come back from break. We'll fill some dead space up here, air, some dead air time, with a couple of updates as far as the scores go. Our reigning champion, Che, che, che Yu Chow, leads three games to, toe, to two over Veronica Ivanovskaya. Wan Kai K over Ilu Kibaroglu, four to two. Sea Rocha now leads Maite Ropero, three to two. Maite has won two games in a row to come back. And Olivia Zalesco, Zaluska leads Amber Chen, four to one. Seo Seo. Over Monica Zabek, four to three. We have one player back in the arena waiting for Jasmine. And Chihiro Kawahara leads Penn five to two. In a race to seven, remember. Melanie Susan Guth for Brittany Bryant, three to one. That's the update for the eight matches going on on this Second round of the one loss side. Jasmine approaching. And we'll be back in business shortly. Tim is sleeping it off. I was just enjoying your scores. <laughs> I had to say something kind of you had Crazy. To trigger me, huh? I had to trigger you somehow. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay, so let's see. She's breaking from the other side now, though. Well, this is new to Jasmine. She hasn't trailed till now. We'll need a square hit on the one. Cue ball. Oh, it's going to be close. Good. Just no ball. And I think she's left a shot on the one as well. Well, Vero has shown her that she can play safe and be dangerous with those safeties. Came close to three fouling her once earlier in the match. But uh, 
I don't know if she can make this. She can just hit it, but yeah, not make it. Nice safety. Well, I thought that cue ball was going to come up against the three. It did not. She's given up a shot here. It's still an interesting layout, though. She will need to get on the two, which is already not easy, and then find the gap between the six and eight or come above for the three ball. So first couple shots are a little strange. And she found a place for the two ball. And actually, she's going to have a nice path to, to get between the 6-9 or the 6-8 for the three. You saying one rail? No, she wants to go into the, to the long rail with right English. Left English, Oh, I think me. the four is in a way to find the gap in between the ball, so. There it is. She just happened to miss the ball. But yeah, there was a, there was a little gap between there that she could have come laid into. Well, that bump on the se six really opened up the three now, so just if you go real first, try not to catch the two ball too thick. Catch it a little thinner. Yeah, Vera likes to visualize and she's just pointing where she wants to hit on the rail. And she'll go rail first on this two ball. This can get away pretty fast speed-wise. Okay, caught it thin. Just She's going to be enough, just but right. The bump is okay, nice. yeah. Now this rack opens up nice. She's got to take that cue ball, either draw it straight back and avoid the nine, or go between the six, eight, six, nine, excuse me. Either avoid the nine on either side to get on the four. Okay, it's left herself a little bit more angle on the five, so I have a feeling she will need to use a short rail. So probably top spin with some right. Just get to the center of the table. That's the thing you really need on the six. extension she feels this is one of the shots where she needs a little more time I would make sure I play with enough right spin though yeah she didn't put much right spin on there and she's hooked herself behind the nine She might be able to play the kick and stick. Bring the six out and get the cue ball at least behind the nine. Yeah, she's going for the other side of it. She's going to play it thin and try to get the nine involved. I think that's a good shot, though. I don't think she's left a thin edge. Now, Jasmine is going to go two rails, and if she catches it full with enough top spin, the cue ball is going to stick right there behind the eight, and the six is going to leave. The only bad thing that could happen to her is if she plays it like dead full in the face, and the cue ball stops, and she makes the six. Didn't catch it. Well, full this in isn't the face a good thing. Yeah, she didn't catch it full yeah. in the face. The cue ball leaked out, and then also it's kind of unfortunate that the six goes right in front of the pocket. Oh, she tried to play with inside spin. 
does have a cut on the 7, but I think I would have liked to go around the 10 to make sure I... Yeah, well, I, you would most of the time end up with an angle that's easier to get to the 8. Now probably with inside, two rails, long rail, long rail. She better be concerned with that side pocket. I'll tell you that. And she was, and she played it very nice. Yeah, good shot. Maybe, I don't know if she can reach this. She's not the tallest player, but I think she should be fine. She's in position to take a, a, a good lead here, two-game lead. Oh, she did it just right. She's a little straight here. Not quite, not much of an angle to do anything with. And she cheat the pocket a little bit and either go to that top rail and come out, or can she get off the back rail and not leave can herself so long on the ten? Can she cheat the pocket maybe a bit with so. draw? No, she, she, tried, she played it safely. She played it kind of safe. Oh, this is a big shot, though. This is a big shot, yeah. But she came through with a big, uh, with one just as hard earlier. Big shot for Vero. Veronique Menard. Oh, just not that time. Just a little bit jabby, though. I feel she didn't really open up enough to play the shot. And such a big chance for Jasmine to level the score for each, who's clearly struggling so far. Well, this will be the second time that she lines up a ball, a 10 ball for Jasmine. And Jasmine gladly takes it. And we will go for a break and be right back. Welcome back to the Predator and WPA World Tumble Women's Championship. For Nick Minard just had a great chance to go 5-3 up, but instead they're not leveled at 4 and no ball on the break, so another chance for Jasmine. I just feel she's been breaking from the short rail the whole match, Veronique, and she hasn't really been able to make any ball, so... I don't want to sound negative, but Veronique Vero's breaks have been uh, less than enthusiastic. It's cost her a couple of games. She started out the match with a break like this, where she broke the balls, decent spread, and left Jasmine a wide open rack to warm up. And now uh, this break, at a very crucial moment, is kind of along the same lines. Well, she's been breaking four times so far, and she's made only one ball on the break in the second break, but then she also scratched. So if you look at the numbers, I would start doubting, like, hey, is this really the spot where I should be breaking from? Uh, during a match is how I would look at it. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, good chance for Jasmine here. Just wondering, shouldn't really be too tough for a run out. Just 
if the five goes to the top oh. left corner or the bottom left in this view. If the five goes to the top left corner in this view, then yeah, everything is so connected, should be fine. If it doesn't, she will need a good shot here on the four. I think this five goes anywhere it wants to, except past the six. I mean, maybe even past the six. Nah, it must go to the bottom left. Then, is she gonna try and play the gap between the 10-9 to get on the 8? Or is she going to go to the right side of the 8 and be in the open? Uh, I, pr I prefer going to the open. Me, t me too, but then you will need a little better position on the 7 here. And she's on the 6 to where she can put it wherever she wants for the 7. Jasmine's in complete control of this rack. It would take a major error from her not to get out. Actually, she can just stop it there and be straight in on the eight. I was going to say, now I'm going to play yeah. the window. If yeah. she had a little bit more angle, I would go three rails around for the other side. But in this case, she can stun off the rail soft or roll off the rail, just some light spin. Just wants to make sure she comes off that rail enough so that the 10 ball doesn't hinder her and she can cue the cue ball. That looks perfect. Just a small angle to the short rail, so it's either she's, she's going to play with top right and come off the rail for the nine in the side, or if she really feels like, hey, I want to let my stroke out, I don't feel too good. Those guys with the WPA? No, oh, this is Gerald. This is uh, Jasmine's manager. Okay. Yeah. I th that's why I pointed in it because I didn't know the gentleman. I figured you might. And the gentleman next to him is the coach from or maybe old coach from Max Lechner. From Max Lechner and also, I think, Sarah Capeller. A couple of Austrian players. Yeah, Austrian players. So yeah, she's a little in between. She can go two rails up to let the stroke out or play top right. I kind of liked going with just follow there and just maybe leaving yourself a little bit longer but a better angle for the nine if she was this straight i would definitely play to shoot the nine in the bottom left corner now she is tough yeah this, this isn't a, this is not also shape i think well, she's elevated make, number one just stop long straight in nice that's shot. a nice yeah, shot that's a Jasmine. good shot, from that's a good shot. That'll boost her confidence. So from almost being down 5-3, she's now up 5-4, Jasmine Ushan. Yes, she is. And these players have won their games in strings. Jasmine won the first three. Vero will run the next four, and now Jasmine's rattled off two of her own. to lead by a game. Cheyu Chow now leads six to two. She's on the hill. Wan Kai Ke is tied at four. Chen is facing elimination, trailing five to two over the Polish player Olivia Zaliska. Zaluska. Excuse me. Those Polish names can be hard to pronounce sometimes if you don't practice them a couple times. Oh, look at this for a break. Finally got something going here. And one ball got kissed in the corner, 100 miles an hour. 
Maybe three in the side. Just no open shot on the two, but has a really good chance to lock the cue ball behind the eight. Here. She can just put her in dead jail, but yep. between the six eight, she can just put her in jail right there. Welcome to Sing Sing. I mean, the only thing she's left is a two, two railer. railer. Yeah. I don't think there is a one railer. This is, this is actually a decent shot to hit. It's, I don't want to say it's an easy two railer, but as they come, if you know how to measure this, um, it's it, it's going to be real close. If you can feel, get some feel for finding the window between the four and the nine, just that area. Yeah. Then there's a pretty good. Well, there's a pretty big ball. On oh, this. Uh, did she call her extension? Yeah, I think it's she's just last last second extension. Yeah. You know the way to measure this ball. Uh, Rodney Morris has a great video on this, and he'll tell you just measure the distance between the two and the cue ball, find the middle, and aim it right at the lower uh, pocket, and then use that same parallel line to hit that rail and hit the two ball, just like she did. Nice hit. Good job. I mean, of course, it didn't get safe, safe, and also it's in the open. But considering where you are hooked, ball in hand would be worse. Got it good. She's looking good right here. Work her way back on the hill here, or get on the hill. But there's uh, six balls to go. Just wonder if she's gonna play the six in the bottom left or is she gonna play for the side? If she plays for the side, she doesn't her, wanna end up too short. Her angle has to be just right yeah. to make it an easy out. So if it goes to the bottom left, I wouldn't mind her playing that, but looks like she's going to the six in the side. Now with this angle, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top rail and come back for the seven in the uh, corner pocket. In the Long bottom. shot in the yeah. bottom, yeah. Play the short side of the seven and then get on the eight. This looks nice. Yeah, I like that. Just wonder, basically just stop spin. Maybe a hair of spin, but not much. She stunned it more with spin. Yeah. That's how the cubo got a little bit more speed. Ooh. She came and she, she got a little close. Closer than I'd like to be here. Yes, but nothing she could not work with, I think. I think she's, she can still hold the cue ball. Just come out. Play with a little left spin, that way you can hit it thicker. If she doesn't really like it, she can play for the eight in the side. I, I, I like that better than trying to hold it for the eight in the same pocket. I really do. I like I her mean, if just you, if, if you feel like you can't hold a cue ball, then definitely change the shot. Well, she's elevating to try to hold the cue ball. And did, a, and did a very, very nice job. I think without the elevation, she couldn't hold it there. No, she needed to draw on that. Well, you know, sure. she lives in the Alps. She's got to have elevation. <laughs> Tim didn't find that funny, folks. Nice uh, for the nine in the bottom right corner. Two stop shots here to get on the hill. It's been stepping up a little bit though. After yeah, making that 10 ball, she looks a little stronger. And see now she rattles off three games in a row to get on the hill over Vero Menard. Seven to four, and Jasmine will be breaking. 
as its alternate break, and the score is an odd number. Yeah, for sure she's gonna break the balls from the side rail again, like she did last rank. Turned out to be great. Didn't have a shot after the break, but played a good save, and after she ran out, so. And Vero, Menard, looking at elimination square in the eye. She needs this next game. Can't afford to lose it. Yeah, she just only missed that long 10 ball, though. And I think there was more positional error because she's left herself tough. She got closer to the 10, I think. She had a good chance to go 5-3 up. Oh, no, it's a tie score. It's 10. It's 6-4. to four. That's right. The break is right. I was incorrect in saying that Jasmine would be, would be breaking. I got Tim a little confused, and probably all of you out there, too. Quite some spin on the cue ball there. Didn't really hit it nice and square. Tough shot on the one, though. If yep. you make the one, it's not guaranteed if to she be on the two. Well, she's going to hit the seven if she just follows it. She's elevating, though, so she doesn't. I would just roll this in. And let the let the cue ball hit the seven. She should have a shot on the deuce. Only yeah. if you hit it square. Yes. No, the, you you got to hit it from the full side. And it looks seven. like you're going to hit it just square. Nice shot by Jasmine. What a good shot. I'm looking at a great piece, brand new piece of pure chalk from Predator that Tim just showed me. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. It's always fun to get new toys. Well, you know, Predator sponsored player, you get all the toys. Oh, you can get them too if you buy them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's what we're friends for. Oh, a friend would get me a free piece. <laughs> so, a nice layout. Needs, needs to stun the cue ball two rails here, though. Won't be able to do it with playing topspin. And, folks, just to give you an idea how Tim and I like to kid around in the booth, <laughs> I just told him that a friend would give me a free piece of chalk. He pulls out a second piece that's in his pocket <laughs> and laughs and puts it back in. <laughs> nice position here oh, for this five ball. That eight ball is going to help. No, it's actually going to hinder now. It's going to hinder the bridge. The good news, she doesn't really have to do much with the cue ball. Yeah. She can stop the cue ball, still have a decent angle on the six. And by going two rails on the six, she's going to have a great angle on the seven, which is key shot, I think, from here. Well, she's looking good in closing out this rack. This will probably be, Jasmine plays good position, so this will probably be the hardest shot she'll have in finishing this rack off. If she gets good position on the eight ball, that'll lead to good position for the nine. Life will be good for Jasmine. Yeah, playing it this way, it's so easy to get yes. to the bottom side of the seven and get a great angle. So just wondering if that nine ball maybe doesn't go to the bottom left corner. If it doesn't, she'll need to make sure she gets a better angle with the eight. But I think at this point, it's just maintaining how she feels the pressure than really how tough the layout is. Well, Timmy, how do you get to the nine ball from here? I like just topspin. 
Top just spin, straight maybe a hair hit the right. headrail and come straight down. No, I like two rails, two rails. You like two rails here? Yeah, just so I can stay away from, yeah. the, from the rail. I like the way she played it because if you go two rails, it brings the side pocket into play. Yeah, Even I, though I, it's rare, but I mean, how many times do you find yourself going right towards that pocket? Nah, I mean, depending. If you tell yourself, oh, just rather play too much spin than not enough, then yeah. you should be fine. She's played a good shot here, though. Like yeah. I said, if the nine ball goes, the layout would be pretty favorable. It would be just managing the pressure. I like the, the way she played that. That was very nice. And this to close out the match and move, move into the loser qualification match coming up to get into the final 16. In stage two, the final 16, the players go to nine but it's single elimination. And there it is, Jasmine Ocean over Vero Menard in a tough battle. Tim DeRuiter and George DHL bringing you the live action. Thanks, folks. And our ne next match is going to be at 2 p.m., so tune in. See you soon.